I'm so glad we serve a God this morning that is big enough to have the whole world in his hands. Psalm 95 said we are the sheep of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. I greet you this morning with a Jesus joy, knowing that God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What another week it has been. God has, in fact, blessed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. Be so kind if you'll meet me back in Isaiah chapter 1, this blessed morning, beginning in verse 10. Isaiah chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. Pray that these words will be help and hope for us in this journey called life. It reads as follows. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wish, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We know that we come this morning not standing in our own strength, but it's by the grace and mercy of God. We pray now that, God, that you would pour out your spirit, that your word would come alive, and find a life-changing place in all of our lives. We'll be careful to give your name all the honor and the glory. It's in the mighty, precious name of Jesus that we pray. And all of God's family said, Amen. As we promised on last week, we would continue this series this week, Pandemonium in the Midst of the Pandemic. Last week in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4, we came to the humble conclusion and realization that we are a sinful nation. We come to the conclusion also that we are not only a sinful nation, but we are a sick nation. But this morning I want to move to some more good news. So much here, I need your prayers and help this morning to move along this Christian journey. Verse 10 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. How is it that the chosen people of God, Israel, chose not to worship the true and living God? The word here in the Hebrew means shama. It means to hear. It means to not only hear audibly, but it means to obey the word of the Lord. Point number one, we talked about the sin of our nation and the sickness of our nation. Discontinuing third point here and one point for the day is the salvation of our nation. If by the grace of God, our nation is going to be saved from our sin and sickness, we need to hear the word of the Lord. So pray with me of the salvation of our nation. If we're going to be saved, we need to hear and obey the word of the Lord. Ye rulers of Sodom, ye people of Gomorrah. 
Israel, unlike Gomorrah, Israel, like Gomorrah and like us, have often turned our backs and walked away from God. And God is saying that you, Israel, my chosen people, you, America, my blessed people, are acting more like Sodom and Gomorrah than you are the people of God. It's time now more than ever before to obey the word of God. And if we're going to obey the word of God, it must begin with heartfelt, sincere, serious repentance. You remember back in Genesis chapter 19, Lot was sitting at the gate, the place of leadership and governing. When the visitors came, he said, come into my house. I'll prepare a meal for you. I'll be very hospitable. But they said, no, Lot, we're not coming into your house. We want to abide in the streets all night. They said, Lot, we know that there are two men in that house and we want to know them intimately and sexually. And God gave them opportunity to repent and return, but they did not receive his invitation to repent. And later, down in chapter 19 of Genesis, he says, Sodom and Gomorrah looked like a burning furnace. He had to pronounce judgment. God is saying, America, if we don't repent and come back to God, while God wants to continue to bless us with blessings that are pressed down, shaken together and running over, God will be forced to pronounce judgment if we don't obey the word of the Lord. I believe it's 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22 that says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. God is looking for a people. God is looking for one of us that will serve him with all of our heart, all of our soul and with all of our mind and walk in obedience in the midst of this pandemonium, in the midst of the pandemic. He said, I am tired of your burnt offerings. A burnt offering should be left on the altar of sacrifice and commitment until we are totally consumed. No more of you, no of me, but it should be all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He said, you bring me your burnt offerings that are but your motives for worship are not pure. He really is giving them a scathing judgment here on their hypocritical false worship. He said, you worship me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. I'm sick of your burnt offerings. I'm fed up with your beasts. I delight not in the blood of your bullocks because you give me the blood of your bullocks and your sacrifices, but you refuse to give me your heart. When you come and appear before me, you, you, you defile my courts. You are full of sin. You're full of iniquity and you know it and you refuse to repent. You are stubborn, hard hearted, stiff necked and just do not want to do that which is right. Your, 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 your vain oblations your incense ought to be going up like the prayers of the righteousness, but your incense are an offense to my nostrils. He's listing here their iniquities that if they don't repent from, they will lead to sad judgment. The calling of your assemblies, when you come together to worship, you are not worshiping me in spirit and in truth. You have a power of God, but deny the power thereof. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You're just religious, but not redemptive. Matter of fact, you as Christians in this age, he's saying, you are asymptomatic. No, not asymptomatic of the COVID-19 virus. You are asymptomatic as in demonstrating or lack of demonstrating the qualities and values and principles of a child of God. I see no love. I see no care. I see no true repentance. You are asymptomatic. If you had to be accused of being a Christian, there would not be enough evidence to convict you because you are asymptomatic in your Christianity. Your new moons, verse 14, and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. Being a little exegetical this morning, it will be talking about the three main feasts, the Passover, 
the tabernacles and the Pentecost in the seventh month. He said, you celebrate the Passover, but are not mindful of symptomatic of the spiritual significance. You are just going through the motions. Time out for just religious appearance and going through the motions. I need, God needs us to be real people of God, particularly in this time in which we live. He's pouring out scathing judgment. You make many prayers, but I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Hebrews prayed with their hands going up to God as in supplications, but he said you're full of blood. I don't want to try your patience this morning, but I must call out the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is not only was Israel guilty of having hands that are full of blood, so is America. The blood of Trayvon Martin, February of 2012, Sanford, Florida. The blood of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, August of 2014. The blood of Breonna Taylor in Louisville in March of 2020. The blood of Atatia Jefferson in October of 2019. We had blood on our hands and we need to repent. If there's going to be salvation of this nation, while we are on stay home mode, slowly moving into phase one, some places phase two, now would be a good time to begin to share the plan of salvation with every person in our family to make sure that all of our children and all of our relatives and all of our loved ones have become children of the Most High God. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. If there's going to be salvation of our nation, we must begin to hear and obey the word of the Lord. It's one thing to activate 2 Timothy 2.15, to study to show ourselves approved, but we must hide the word in our heart, let it become flesh, begin to live among us. We must share it with our children, husbands, wives, all that God allows us to come in contact with, hear the word of the Lord. That really makes the difference. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. Oh God, help us. He goes on down to verse 16 and says, we must repent, wash you, make you clean, Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. It's not enough to just think about doing good. We must repent, not say that I'm sorry that I got caught, not sorry that I was exposed, but the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, godless sorrow leads to repentance. I'm sorry that I violated God's law. I'm sorry that I disappointed God that loved me with an everlasting love. I'm really sorry. Repentance is the Greek word metanoia. Turn from my sin, turn to the Savior. Move in a brand new direction. Old things are passed away and all things become new. We need to hear the word of the Lord. We need to obey the word of the Lord. We don't want to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't want to be the source object of God's judgment we want to be the source object of God's favor creating us clean hearts renewing us a right spirit even to the point that we'll teach transgressors your ways sinners shall be converted hallelujah make us clean again learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed Advocate for the fatherless. Plead in court for the widows. He lists all of their iniquities. But God is such a loving God. He will not leave us stuck in sin and iniquities. He wants us to come out of darkness. Can I get a witness? And walk in the marvelous light. We must be willing to be obedient. 
wash us thoroughly from my sin. David cried out, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. You would have been justified, God, if you had crushed us with the power of your hand, crushed us with the sovereignty of your feet. But you call us out of darkness that we might begin to walk in the marvelous light. It's amazing. The Bible says in Peter, God is long suffering to us, would not willing that any would perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3 9. I pray that God would bring this nation collectively and all of us individually back to our knees to repentance. We've seen the horror of the knee on George Floyd's neck and he kept saying, I can't breathe. Oh, that we would fall on our knees this time in repentance. Tell God that I'm sorry for my sin. Give me the power to be an overcomer, no longer being conquered and yielded to my sinful ways. I, I want to be made new so you can use me for your glory this morning. salvation of our nation while it is true and i believe by faith is already occurring there needs to be criminal justice reform but i've come to learn that life has levels of perplexity and complexities beyond and even perhaps before criminal justice reform needs to be christ jesus redemption because anytime you can Murder, cold bloodedness. Anytime in Buffalo, New York, where you can push down an older gentleman, 75 years young, blood coming from his head, and you just walk on by as if nothing has occurred. That, my friend, is a matter of the heart. You can be cruel, racist, and evil and have no sense of remorse that becomes a matter of the heart so before we get too involved in criminal justice reform there needs to be christ jesus redemption of our heart and our soul come on help me pray this morning there must be a change in the heart of god's people to undergird criminal justice reform I read a report this morning that there are over six million people incarcerated in America we have more people in prison than communist countries do 70 percent of the population in the prison system is of the african-american diaspora though we only make up about 13 percent of the national population it's the new jim crow it's called mass incarceration there needs to be a change of heart i found some other ugly statistics that i don't want to bore you with but i must inform you with that based on the academic achievement or lack thereof of african-american boys in the third grade it gives the profitable people an idea of how many prisons they need to build for profit let me say that again based on the third grade level of our boys in academia will tell the folk who build prisons for prosperity how many centers they need to construct dr jawanza kanjufu said it this way i believe if animals were killed at the rate of african-american men it would be declared an endangered species and been given national laws to protect them i don't want to trouble you this morning but yes i do want to trouble your heart so that we may be awakened from our comfortable comatose states and realize that the battle is not over though god has brought us from a mighty long way god knows we still have a mighty long way to go if animals were being killed at the rate of african-american men they would be declared an endangered species and given national laws to protect them but in this unjust system 
But I must let you know there is hope in the midst of the darkness. There is a salvation of our nation when we begin now to obey the word of the Lord. Allow me to move to point number two. Sign of hopes in our nation. Yes, you probably already know the former Minnesota officers have been charged, one with second degree murder, the other three aiding and abetting second degree murder. This is step one in a long justice. Step one in a long process to liberation. These are not comfortable things to even talk about, but too often the church only focuses on those things which are comfort and do not disturb our complacency and the quiet, calm nature of our soul. But time out! We must be prophetic in our ministry. We must be the people of God. Dr. King said in a speech way back in 1968, we are going to win our freedom because both the sacred heritage of our nation and the eternal will of the Almighty God are embodied in our echoing demands. So however difficult it is during this period, however difficult it is in the agony, however difficult, however long it takes amidst constant hurt, amidst constant insult, amidst constant disrespect, he still said, I can sing this song in victory. We shall overcome because the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Thomas Carlyle was right when he said, no lie can live forever. He was a Scottish philosopher who penned those words. William Cullen Bryan was right when he said, truth crust the earth will rise again. God knows by the grace of God, truth is being uncovered as ugly and as painful and liberating as it is, truth shall rise again. I read the report that said in the 52 states, if you include Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, people are protesting all over the world. How is it that a leader will release tear gas on peaceful demonstrators? Yes, I said it. Didn't he not read the First Amendment that said there is a right to peaceful assembly? The military is supposed to be used to fight against our enemies, not to fight against our own people. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. I think I feel my help coming this morning. There is salvation for our nation, but God knows there is sign of hope for our nation because people are beginning to rise up from Boise, Idaho, Biloxi, Mississippi, Tosca, Oklahoma, Brockton, Massachusetts. Some of these areas are not largely populated by african-american people but people of every race every gender every state in life are now coming together so it tells me that as a people of god as we keep coming together there is a hope there are signs of hope for our nation something about the life of george floyd has touched america like never before Normally, after a certain relatively short point in time, the protests and marches seem to decline. But this one right here seems to be increasing in largeness of numbers. Not only are the 52 states showing that folk are protesting, standing up, for in, standing up against injustice, trying to stamp out police brutality, but I'm told that they also are protesting in 21 other countries all the way in New Zealand, down under in Australia, folk are rising up against injustice. Help me to pray this morning to stay on point and not become bitter, but try to become better. When 57 men of an emergency unit in Buffalo choose to resign from the emergency unit because of in support for the officers who pushed down the 75 year old man, something is wrong with the heart Maybe they need to turn in their badge. Sign of hope for our nation. When you see all of God's people coming together all over the nation and all over the world. Hope for the hopeless. Who will be the voice for the voiceless masses? Didn't they read Matthew 25 said if you have been good to the least of these 
you did it unto me, but if you neglected the least of these, you have done it unto Jesus the Christ. Time for our Caucasian brothers and evangelical evangelicals to stand up and open up their mouth in the midst of their mega churches and to say what the Lord the Lord God says, not just enough now to preach nice little homiletically arranged sermons with little cute hermeneutical application. We've got to address this area called injustice. We've got to speak out against racism that events redemption. If we claim to be children of God, we got to pray for some Holy Ghost boldness. Can I get a witness up in here this morning? Salvation of our nation, but the signs of hope for our nation. When you drive through Washington, D.C., after you get off stay home lockdown, stop by Black Lives Matter Plaza. They took down the old sign, put up a new sign, Black Lives Matter Plaza. Kudos to the mayor of the nation's capital. God is moving in our midst, giving us hope in the midst of the trying pandemic and pandemonium that we are experiencing, I feel hope all up above my head. I hear music in the air. I know that there is a God somewhere. Come on, help me somebody. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is but sinking sand. There may be pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic, but oh, there is a God who's going to save this nation. We got to get back on our knees and cry out to God. Blessed is the nation whose God is your over help us God there is a remnant that will stand for right stand up against injustice we saw police chiefs all around the nation walking with the protesters walk together locked arm in arm in unity there is hope in the midst of this pandemic there are signs of hope I tell you this morning this younger generation is rising up and will not take it anymore. When the Attorney General of Minnesota increased the charges, not to be bitter, but to try to render justice. Somebody said the few bad officers that are too many cast a cloud on all the good law-abiding polices. On a lighter note, Langston Hughes, the poet laureate, said, I too sing America. He said, you know, I am the darker brother. They send me in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. I'll be at the table today when company comes, nobody will dare ask me to go in the kitchen because they will see how beautiful I am. As a people, we've got to be reminded as a people, we've got to know that we are people of God. We are beautiful in the sight of God. Don't look down on me because the son has already done that. God made us this way and God doesn't make any trash. When you want to be biblical for a moment, come on, let's, let me slow down, try to gather myself this morning. I'm kind of rallying, my heart is kind of pumping this morning. The Bible said Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. From those three sons come all the races of the world, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So at least, no matter what's your race, no matter where you're from, no matter what's your ethnic race group, we are at least first cousins because our fathers are brothers. So it tells us how foolish, how God awful, how evil is racism and prejudice because the Bible said God created us from the dust of the earth. You do know that dust is left over dirt. So when we are racist and prejudiced against another race, it's simple as this. One lump of dirt looking down on another lump of dirt. Your dirt may be lighter than mine. My dirt may be lighter than yours, but it doesn't make that I'm any better. Certainly doesn't mean I'm any less. It's just a child of God. Salvation of our nation. Signs of hope in our nation. More signs of hope as people come together all over the world. London, Johannesburg, 
Liberia, all over Europe, even Germany, they are marching for what is right. I declare it's a sign of hope. Psalm 3.3 3 does say he's lifted up of a bow down head. Don't be depressed. Don't get delusional. Don't become distorted. God is working. He may not come when I want him, but he's always on time. God is orchestrating this movement that nobody can stop. You can put fences all up around Lafayette Park if you want to, but God has put a God in the fence around our heart. Love is being expressed now more than ever before. We are on the precipice of a dawn of a new day. We are privileged to be able to see this watershed, life-changing moment that's taking place right before our eyes. God is working. Don't get it twisted. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. God is going to save this nation because somebody is pleading the blood. There's some hard-hearted folk that God needs to deal with. But the Bible says back in Jeremiah, I believe, give me your heart of stone. I'll give you a heart of flesh. Back during the time of the people of Jeremiah, they said their hearts were so hard, he could engrave on it with an engraving iron. But God can take the hardest heart, give us hearts of flesh to make us love one another. Help me somebody. Signs of hope, I tell you. Somebody said on a lighter note, anytime Air Jordan, Michael Jordan speaks out, you know it's getting better. Back in 2016, there was a social activist quarterback by the name of Colin Kaepernick who simply bowed the knee at the playing of the national anthem, not to disrespect the flag, but to protest silently and peacefully against social injustice and Polish brutality for which he was brutalized and blackballed from the National Football League back in 2016. Better than some quarterbacks that were playing but still couldn't get a job. But he kept his purpose and stayed true to his cause. He did not sell out as God would have it. Now some four years later, Roger Goodell, the National Football League commissioner, has to come back and said on national TV that we are sorry as the NFL. We didn't pay more attention to what the African-American players were saying. He really came out and said it this way. If it were not for African-American football players, there'd really be no valid in NFL. There is hope for us as a people. He had to admit that they should have listened to what the African Americans was players were saying in spite of what the president said in spite of the ugly name that he called them not only Roger Goodell sign of hope and repentance now he really needs to go back and apologize to Colin Kaepernick that have finished that says, phrase the statue of the Robert E. Lee in Richmond, the former capital of the Confederacy, you do know the Confederates were pro-slavery, but the Union won, so they were anti-slavery. I'm told that as soon as possible, that the governor of Virginia has said, as soon as possible, that massive statue in the center of Richmond, Virginia, the former capital of the Confederacy that was, was, was for slavery is coming down. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? These are signs of hope. Sometimes the wheels of change change so slowly, it looked like it's never going to happen. But oh, by the God that we serve, change is moving. There is a move of foot. God is working in a mighty way. He's touching the hearts, souls, and kinds of men. Some of our Caucasian brothers and sisters now are finally having their eyes open and they begin now to understand what we are trying to say. Some laws have already been changed. No longer can you use chokehold as a law enforcement principle. Should have been outlawed a long time ago. Should have never came in the law. But by the grace of God, the wheels are turning. L let me keep moving. Y'all getting me excited though. I can't see you. I hear you and feel your prayers. Two things must happen. 
at the base of this whole desirable life change there must be salvation there must be a change of heart not just enough to have criminal justice reform but there must be Christ Jesus redemption pastor you said that before I know on purpose I'm saying it again so that we might get as twisted because at the core the, 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 the heart of the matter that we're wrestling with the heart of the struggle is the matter of the heart until men and women get saved we'll never have a real true perfect union because you can change laws but not, it's not just enough to change a law we need to know Christ Jesus the Lord signs of hope things are changing spiritual is the foundation but now we must be political it's not just enough to protest we got to vote come November haven't you seen enough of this it's time for a change I know no man or woman boy or girl is perfect but this time you know what to do has to be careful you we don't want to go to political too late I'm already gone you know what you got to do it's not enough to march you need to march your happy self to the ballot box and pray and vote we need the Lord first then we need change some laws can I get a witness we got salvation of our nation signs of hope for our nation the Bible said this be not weary in well-doing for in due season we're gonna reap because we are not going to faint oh no 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 we can't stop now we, we, we on the move now while the momentum is here we want to seize this moment we don't want to let this harvest pass we got salvation for our nation as we begin to obey God as you pray and intercede for the lost in your household and the loss in this nation then be aware see the glimmer and signs of hope as you drive by black lives matter plaza then lastly the size of the impact of our nation I said before as I got excited this death of George Floyd has not only touched America, it has literally touched the whole world. America, the whole world is watching us. How can we talk about human rights violations in communist countries and other places when we allow black lives to be treated as if they don't matter? The whole world has now been engaged we must be aware of the size of the impact of this nation in many regards as so goes America so goes much of the world I'm gonna get back to preaching in a minute and be more comfortable for some of y'all but we, we need to stay on this just for a minute we'll try to move forward next week if God allows us it's time to wash our lives while we on stay home lockdown put away our evil doing when you see evil you can't just turn your head and act as if it doesn't exist you got to speak to it in love and in wisdom we need new judges many times when we have to go to court folk cannot afford an expensive lawyer so they end up with a public defender some of them do well but when a public defender takes a case of an African-American, is he or she going to give it their best interest going against high-powered, high-paid lawyers who knows the judge and the jury that's been tainted? I'm just speaking to the system that we have to thrive in. But no matter what the system does, we come to learn if God be for us, who can be against us? We are persuaded that neither death nor life nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. This nation is going to be better. There are signs of hope and the size of the importance of this nation is immeasurable. Pray like never before. 
call on the name of the Lord, walk by faith, for the just shall live by faith. We are overcomers, we are conquerors, we are victorious in the name of the Lord. God is moving in our midst. Amos closed out this way. Amos 5, 7 said, you have poured justice in the trash and ditched righteousness. But it says in Amos 5, 24, the words that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King so popularized, let justice roll like waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. God is going to ask us to give an account. Did you stand up for justice? Were you strong enough and faithful enough to stand amidst the turbulent waters in which we have to go through? Did you stand up with the strength of God for those who could not speak for themselves? Or did you just become complicit and allow those to suffer and didn't open your mouth? We are the spiritual... See, a real spiritual Christian in a real spiritual church has a degree of militancy. We are spiritual social activists that are concerned for the holistic life of the people of God. It's not just enough for you and me to be doing well. The Bible says, I am my brother's keeper. You are your sister's keeper. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. There's a better day coming. Keep praying for all those that are protesting that God will put a hedge of protection around them in the midst of the pandemic that is still alive. All the doctors are concerned that all the protesters coming together by the thousands in close proximity, some not wearing masks, not practicing social discipline, distances. But we pray. I pray that God will continue to speak to your heart this morning as we continue to stand on the word of God. May something come alive in you and me that has been dormant for a while. It seemed for a while that hope became dormant or even dead, but I stopped by to tell you this morning as I move to close, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Our best is yet to come. Don't give up hope because when you give up hope, it becomes like a broke winged eagle that cannot fly. Pandemonium in the midst of the pandemic. We claim salvation for our nation, amen. We see signs of hope for our nation. We are keenly aware of the size of the impact of this nation that God would have his way again. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Uh, lastly, lastly, lastly. When retired military generals are speaking out against what they see as wrong, that's a sign of hope, my friend. They normally stay close to their military position and are reluctant and reticent to speak. But even the quiet man has now spoken against injustice. So we must do so also. If you're here this morning, under the sound of my voice, in your home, on your sofa, in your car, by iPhone, iPad, a big screen TV, and have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be your day of liberation. For the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, that you will come to know him today. For it's not God's will that any would perish but that all would come to repentance. If you ask God to come into your life, confess your sins, he'll save your soul today. We have loving, caring counselors who are waiting to receive your call, who will be glad to spend some time with you, sharing with you the plan of salvation. Perhaps you just need somebody to pray with you and walk with you through this difficult season of pandemic and pandemonium. They'll be so glad and willing to do that with you on today. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you as you walk in victory and be a voice and a witness for Jesus. It's 
Good to have change in laws, I said earlier, but not only must we have change in laws, perhaps even more importantly, there must be communion with the Lord. Are you praying with me? Let me say that one last time. It's not just enough to change the laws. We need to see the hearts of men and women change. But in order for that to happen, we must have communion with the Lord. It's first Sunday in June and it's communion. I pray that you have bread or crackers that represent the body of Jesus Christ. I pray you have fruit or some kind of juice that represents the shed blood of Jesus that was shed to blot out all of our transgressions. So virtually this morning, join us as we share in the blessed ordinance of communion. It's also called the Eucharist, which means to give thanks. It's called the Lord's Supper. It's called the Last Supper. It speaks to our desire and our need as change agents for Jesus to have communion with the Lord. I can only imagine on this blessed Sunday morning, the atmosphere in an upper room in Jerusalem, Jesus met with his disciples for the last time on this side. He took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which was broken for you, so that our communion with God would never be broken. Let us partake together of this bread of life that represents his broken body. The Bible said, likewise, after that, he took the cup, said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. What can wash away our blood, our sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Let us partake of this fruit of the vine that represents his shed blood that blotted out all of our transgressions. Amen. As you move about this blessed day, may you experience the joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passes all understanding. May you not grow weary in well-doing, for there is a brighter day on the horizon. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. You give us a peace, even in the midst of the pandemonium in this pandemic, that truly passes all understanding. We receive your joy that passes all understanding. It's a joy unspeakable. Touch every heart that is troubled. Calm every mind that is stressed, full of anxiety. For your word says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Make your requests known unto God. You promise to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, we realize that there is a lot going on in our world today, but you were not caught by surprise. We pray that you would guide us through this weary season. Give us insight, direct and guide all that we should do and all that we should be. We claim salvation for this nation. We see signs of hope for this nation because there is a godly spiritual remnant that still cries out to God for guidance, direction, comfort, and succor. And we begin to realize the size of the impact of this nation on the rest of the world. Lead us and guide us to be the people of God. Pour out your spirit on Fort Foot Baptist Church, God, that we would be the church of the living God. We'd be the church you call us to be. 
We thank you for the body of Christ called the Fort Foot family, how they continue to support your ministry, that we may reach out to the lost, that sinners would be evangelized, so that saints would be edified, but above all, that God would be magnified. God, have your way in all of our lives. Change is on the horizon. Now unto him that's more than able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, majesty, power, and glory for all. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. May God give you hope for today and joy for days to come. Be blessed until we meet again. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for that wonderful word from the Lord. And at this time, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you would simply just like someone to pray for you, our office counselors are standing by waiting to receive your call. You'll find the numbers on the next slide, and the lines will remain open for the next two hours. So don't hesitate to call. We hope to see you back here next week for our online services. But until then, remember, God loves you. We love you. And, and there's, there's nothing, nothing you can, can do about it. For he is the great I am. For he is the great I am. Y'all like that? For he is the great I am.